What it do, everybody? It's your boy, King Crowder, back again with another edition of History You May Not Know and Things That Are Not Taught in Detail for Show. Today, we're going to focus on the great state of Arkansas. For those who do not know, Arkansas has rich history in this country that we are not taught formally or detail about the race riots and ethnic cleansing that happened. Today's lesson is going to focus on Elaine, Arkansas. If you did not know, from September 30th to October 2nd of, of 1919, they had a place in Elaine, Arkansas, in a rough county of Phillip, Arkansas, where many hundreds of black Americans lived and they were fought and attacked by white Americans. It was said that there was eyewitnesses when a attorney from the NAACP said when the Negroes in that area were working the fields. Remember, they were working these parts of towns, being sharecroppers, gaining their freedoms, working them, when one of the deadliest confrontations in Arkansas's bloodiest history has ever been discussed. Let's talk about the background of it. Most people have no idea that the um, area of, that they were located in was developed in the cotton plantations. And it was where many, like I said, black Americans who were freed from civil war worked where they gained freedom for their families. Many of these freedmen of the descendants of slaves worked on these lands as sharecroppers. What they did did not notice that black Americans outnumbered the white Americans in Elaine from a 10 to 1 ratio. When they began to go down on these wealthy white landowners, they began to have disputes. Hey, we're not being paid, we're not being paid enough, we're not being compensated for our long hours, and our working conditions are not great. You must understand that the legislator at the time were the white Americans. They had disenfranchised the black Americans because many of the poor whites were going through some of the similar barriers, but they had rights to vote. They had an easier registration process and they had more acceptance inside the political systems. Most people do not realize that sometimes we look at the historical context, we look at poll taxes and different things like that. They were to subjugate many people that were laborers and working in parts of the area. Let's go on to the other part of history that was going on. This is when Jim Crow began to spur and began to activate. So Jim Crow was going on, poll taxes were going on, and that's when lynching, which was a crime of passion and to show power over one another, began to get going. White landowners began to abuse their sharecroppers, who were the black Americans working these land at the time. And while they were working this land, they were underpaying them. They wouldn't pay them. They would just say, hey, you don't owe us. We're not going to pay you anything today. I made my money. You didn't get capitalized of it. So what the black Americans started to do at the time, they began to negotiate better. They began to politically talk to each other. They began to say, hey, this guy isn't paying this. He's not paying a livable wage. Let's work for this farmer. So when the landowners began to notice that many black Americans began to communicate, formally think, strategize for each other, they began to know that one particular owner named Robert A. Hill in Winchester, Arkansas, had founded a progressive farm union. He worked his purposes to gain uh, better payments, better lifestyle, and made sure that the black sharecroppers were not being exploited. As the events took place, right? So we began to see black farmers stand up for themselves, saying, hey, we're going to unionize, we're going to organize, and we're going to go against these horrible working conditions that were going on. So fast forward a little bit, the white sharecropper landowners knew that they were doing this and they had no way to champion them. And so what did they do at the time when they had no way to orchestrate how the black Americans would go? They would kill them. Most people have no idea that this was the main strategy during the red summer of these years. The red summer we will discuss later on in a video, breaking it down in detail, what happened and how they were targeting. So the black farmers began to unionize. The white landowners couldn't control them. What did they decide to do next? They decided to kill them. These black farmers were literally standing up for themselves, negotiate prices, and figure things out. White mobs began to formulate in the area of Lane, Arkansas, and that's when mob terrorism and ethnic cleansing happens. What they began to do was to shoot, burn, kill, and attack black farmers near the churches. They began to shoot their children, their families, and other parts in the Elaine, Arkansas area. Black trustees tried to defend themselves and bullets were exchanged, but they were overmatched because they had no idea that a white race mob from all over the county said, boom. Remember, they were being attacked on the land where they were working. The, the um, newspaper, the police, the law enforcement were all in unison to do not protect the black laborers of this town. The true tragedy that we do not understand from a historical context was they were being portrayed 
as the aggressors. You must remember, the paper, the written word, were the media of the time. If you look at the Sun Hill Times in this area, they called them a sharecropper in Tennessee. They made the sharecroppers be viewed as the aggressors, not the white landowners and the white mob that came in there and shot at people at randomly at a church. What they began to champion and do and say is, hey, these sharecroppers were wrong to unionize themselves. They had no right to break a black insurrection to attack us. So it was our God-given right to form a mob to make sure that the attack bullets did not form. This local white issue went so far the governor at this main called it a Negro uprising. Arkansas newspaper, the police, the law enforcement, and war crimes units were all on unison with each other. Both people have no idea how deep this stuff goes. Remember, at this point in time, Jim Crow was just spurning. So you had a ethnic cleansing to remove blacks from having any rights at this time from having any issues. What made it even more tragedy, even though we had black people being gunned down the street, when federal troops began to go inside this area, they arrested over 300 of the black population. They put stockades, they arrested them, they took their wealth, they burned down their homes. And what had happened was almost 100 to 300 black Americans were wounded, almost an unknown number were killed, homes were burned down, their towns and their wealth was completely gone. There was no love. There was no insurance policy to make sure they got even with it. It was just, you lost this, that's what happened. So the land was never recouped. The people that began to get involvement never got any just to. The only thing that can come up after that issue was the NAACP could release a statement. And they released a statement saying, to whom it may concern, Mr. Bratton, who was the governor, I am a lawyer from Little Rock, Arkansas, and I am um, reserving the rights of over 60 colored families to in Elaine to represent them, to let them know that this was an unjust cause of violence done to those who wanted to get the proper just due for the price of cotton. The governor responded, the Negroes overstepped, they did not do what was right, and they must face the consequences. The court system went to trial in October and November of 1919 against the all-white Arkansas jury and against the 112 black defendants. Most of them have been disenfranchised and poor had to face some type of hard sentencing. 73% of them, 73% of the 122 black Americans were charged with murder. Let me hear this again. 73 black Americans were charged with murder even though they were attacked, even though they were shot against, against the Phillips County in Arkansas. The defendants had no right. They were unjustly due and they had to make it go all the way to the appeal court systems. What was so sad about this era is that the Supreme Court had to go all the way to them just to get the rights due in the state of Arkansas, similar to the Scottsboro Brewer case. Con in conclusion, we know that these issues happen in this place. If you are from the state of Arkansas, have you ever heard of this? Have you heard of the Elaine Massacre? Have you known that those black people from that area have never gotten just due? Have you known that the ethnic cleansing that happened in the newspaper in this area stated we have just begun? They have said that we will kill Negroes at will and black Americans have no right to this land. All of this was just coming up because, because black Americans wanted to get fair compensation, accurate assessment, and wanted to get that 40 acres in the mule that was promised after the Civil War legislation. This is a crime that happened very commonly during the Reconstruction era of this country. Elaine Arkansas Massacre, something that must be studied, something that must be shown, and something that must be discussed. This happened September 30th through October 2nd of 1919, and we still do not teach the proper lesson of ethnic cleansing. It's your boy King Crowder back again, giving to you the story. I'm not giving you his story. I'm not giving you my side of the story. I prefer to give you the entire story and complete content. I give you this information because we don't learn history as we should, y'all. We do not learn, ladies and gentlemen. So if you have a desire, wanting to know, and wanting to be educated on it, I am here to teach you. Please smash the subscribe button. Please comment, like, or go to the channel. I hope you learned something today, and I hope it was all worth your time. It's your boy, King Crowder. Until next time, peace.